Jesus Christ, look at all these notes that I wrote down. Chapter 1060, Luffy's dream. You already know what it is. I don't know how I'm gonna get through all of this within a reasonable amount of time, but I'm gonna try my best. Weekly Shonen Jump, the cover has Gear 5 or Nika, whatever, holding onto the logo and everything. We also get a color spread from Oda showing Luffy and the crew. It's sort of just like a remake of an older color spread, but the chapter starts out, Luffy and Robin just having a conversation about Sabo and the revolutionary's intentions. How for sure, Sabo did not murder Cobra, that it doesn't make any sense and that the revolutionaries only want the celestial dragons and not the kings. Chopper and Usopp are upset about Cobra's death while Sanji, Nami and Luffy are worried about Vivi and Luffy is specifically worried about Sabo and what's going on with him. This causes Zoro to be annoyed and to bring up how in the past Luffy has said that even though he's in trouble we should leave him on his own adventure. Zoro also says how Vivi is a strong woman, she is capable and we should let her be. We would only come to her rescue if things get really bad. I'm not too sure how much I agree with Zoro there i do see the logic behind it but luffy should have learned his lesson by now after what happened to ace and marineford you'd think that luffy would just sprint to the rescue after ace got executed this causes luffy to call zoro onigashima chop calling zoro green mom nami calls zoro green kaido while sanji simply calls him shitty marimo or shitty moss head if you prefer in response zoro simply tells sanji shut up number four and sanji gets really upset at that <laughs> reading more things in the newspaper robin talks about how the abolition of the war Lords released all of these dangerous pirates onto the world as well as caused a brand new emperor to rise. Luffy's over here in disbelief laughing at how Buggy ended up becoming an emperor. In response to all the talk about Sabo and his intentions, Luffy declares Sabo's dream and explains how Sabo just wants to free everyone due to how he grew up in a restricted household, travel the world, and write a book about it. At the same time, because he was already talking about Sabo's dream, Luffy mentions his own dream. Not the Pirate King dream, but his true dream because Luffy does have a true dream that us readers do not know about. He reveals his dream to the rest of the Straw Hats, whose reactions range between shock and laughter. He specifies how it can only be achieved if he becomes Pirate King, whatever that means. Did I not tell you guys already? Usopp replies with, not that it matters because it's impossible anyways. Luffy further reveals how he only told Shanks, Ace, and Sabo, and all three of them laughed, while Shanks laughed so much and was crying. What's interesting about this is that the reactions that the Straw Hats as as well as Ace, Sabo, and Shanks are having to Luffy's dream is the same reaction that the Roger Pirates were having to witnessing the One Piece. So this tells us that whatever the One Piece is, is tied to Luffy's dream. And who left the One Piece? It was Joy Boy back in the Void Century. And who's currently Joy Boy? It is Luffy. So there's something to be discussed there. Jembe, Chopper, Nami, and Frankie all praise Luffy for his dream, talking about how only somebody like him could come up with a dream like that. Frankie even saying, we're so close to Laugh Tale, we're almost gonna achieve it. We just have one road poneglyph left. Although Robin just interrupts him and says, you know, it's not that easy, right? That one road poneglyph that we're missing has been lost to time and we have no clue where to find it. Moving on to the main section of the chapter that everybody's talking about. Sabo is hiding out in Lulusia Kingdom this whole time, talking to Dragon and the revolutionaries. Sabo tells them that he saw somebody on that empty throne, revealing to the revolutionaries as well as Dragon that there is a secret king of the world above the five elder stars. Interestingly, Sabo's method of communication was a regular Denden Mushi and not a white one, meaning that Sabo allowed the marines who were listening in to hear this. In other words, Sabo wanted his call to be unsecured and he wanted other marines to hear about the fact that there's a secret king above the five elders. So this tells me that Sabo did this on purpose. <laughs> My cat just sneezed. <laughs> Lulusia Kingdom is one of the eight nations that are currently revolting against the world government. The perfect hiding spot for Sabo as this call is taking place, we see Im-sama as well as the five elder stars back in Marijua hearing this call and determining what to do about it. Im-sama simply pulls up a map with Lulusia Kingdom on it, X's out the map, and all of a sudden we see the skies above Lulusia Kingdom darken. And what follows after that? Laser beams start to shoot down from above, destroying the island. Most people are speculating that the world government, specifically Im-sama, has control over Uranus and that the secret king of the world made use of Uranus to erase Lulusia kingdom off of existence. And all of this occurred because Sabo called to confirm that he did not kill Cobra, as well as reveal that there is a secret king above all kings ruling over the world. Anyways, when the Marine Department of Communications questions what happened in Lulusia Kingdom, the five elders simply respond with, there was never a Lulusia Kingdom. What are you talking about? 
scary stuff. I would not want to work within that department because I'd probably have a hit on my head after that. <laughs> Days later, as the Straw Hats are approaching a winter island, they find themselves in intense weather conditions. Sanji hears the cries of a lady and wants to save her, of course. So Zoro cuts a path forward with one sword style bird dance. And finally, Chopper rescues her. It turns out to be Jewelry Bonnie, a fellow member of the worst generation, alongside Luffy and Zoro, with a bounty of 320 million berries. A bit on the lower end, but I don't believe she's been active as of late. Anyways, this chapter is ridiculous. Easily a 10 out of 10. Nobody can convince me otherwise. You got Im Sama returning, the potential reveal of Uranus, the potential death of Sabo, although he is a Logia, so I'm not sure if that killed him. Although he should die because that was an ancient weapon, allegedly. You also got the crew reacting to the news at the reverie, as well as Vivi and Sabo. You got Luffy's true dream being revealed to the crew and how they react to it. And we finally got Jewelry Bonnie being relevant within the story now. Hopefully up next is Yuruge. I'm waiting for that. Anyways, the common question of the day is, what do you think that power that Im Sama used was? I'd love to hear about your theories in the comment section below. Thank you for watching. Like, favor, and subscribe and have a good one.